what we have here is my temperature humidity sensor tied into the internet serves as a little server that I can use to log information either by itself or to be able to access it over the internet it's a pretty interesting little device this computer the at Mega 2560 on the board uh, the Mega board bottom part here is I don't know, five bucks or so from China. Has as much or more power than the 360 model 65. Largest computer we had that we installed at Mutual of Omaha in 1965. That's the amazing progress that we've seen in the field of computer hardware in the last 50, 60 years. It's amazing. I tell you, absolutely amazing. <clears throat> it's also the, you've heard of servers on the internet. One of the functions here is it sits on the internet and it's a server. You can inquire into it on the internet through a through a browser like Google and it'll return the date, time, the request number, the temperature and the humidity, current temperature and humidity in the radio shack here. Now it's also allows me to log that information on this little tiny SD card here, if you can see that. That's the disk I.O. I think that's about a 4 gig card, 4 gigabytes. That's more disk storage than we had in Mutual until probably the 19, mid-70s. All on that one little card. Amazing, amazing. This top board, which rides piggyback on the Mega 2560, a well-designed system so you can stack modules on that will do different things. Just plug them in. Well, this is the interface to the internet and also the controller for the disk drive and it allows me to also plug directly into the board down below through these pass-through connectors so I can hook up other devices, I.O. devices like the DS timer. This is the timing function. It's a crystal control clock that uh, keeps us in sync with the current time. It's got a little battery back up there. You can't see it too well here, but it's right in there. <clears throat> and that gives us the date and the time. And over here we've got a little sounder. When we access this device from the internet, it'll sound a little beep there, so uh, just a little luxury, so I know it's being accessed. And at that same time, the indicator light will go on, the red light. Over here, this little blue thing, little blue device we've got over here, that's a DHT11 humidity and temperature sensor. And that has a serial connection to the to the main 2560 over here and the, when it's polled or given a request to return the, the uh, temperature and the humidity, it'll do so. Same way with the clock. So everything is controlled and run by this by the uh, Mega, which is 256K of memory which is exactly the same, actually, as we had on our 360 Mod 65, which is several million bucks for that computer. That wasn't a cheap computer. This little I.O. Uh, uh, interface board and the, uh, the uh, internet hookup here is, I think that's probably about four bucks, three or four bucks. These little sensors are anywhere from 50 cents, 20 cents for the sounder. It'll also sound when we access it. It's uh, oh, anywhere maybe to one or two bucks usually. So it's a pretty cheap setup and it do some fantastic work for us. So here's a, I'll access it here from the internet. I'll show you that the results in a minute. But I've got my browser running and I'm hooked, it, hooked into the internet through my Asus router. And when I uh, send a request in, you'll see what it does on this end. Beeps the beep, turns on the light, sends back a response, and tells the caller, who in this case happens to be me, uh, what the date, time, temperature, and humidity is down here in the shack. And we'll show you that now. Take the camera off the base. Set it around here. Now you can see the, see the screen. We'll uh, do a request now to see what the server date is. There we go. We just inquired. We said we've got a 
Question number 22. The date and time is 2002-17. 1428-48 is the time. 2-28-48 p.m. Temperature is 23 degrees centigrade. 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And the humidity is 33%. Uh, I have a little bit of a, since I've been out of commission for a while, I have a little little comment there. Man, it's great to be back at the computer consoles again. Yes, sir, greatest toys ever invented in the world. Not only do they have a practical purpose, but they're really, really fun to play with in the program. We'll hit her again here. We had request 22 there. Oop, there's request 23. And that information is all being logged on our little disk drive there. And we can get that data off that disk drive if we'd like. We can do, we can change our, our uh, address at the top to get log. And hit the enter key. There it is. It's out the log that we have on there so far since the last time we deleted the log. And if we want to clear that log or delete it, we have another command. Remember, this is all going over the internet. Well, we can say D E L L O G for delete log. And uh, hit the old enter key. It says access log file, log deleted. All right, well, let's go back and Let's get the log again and make sure that's what happened. Just for fun, just to see. No log entries found. Look at there. Okay, see it. It knew right away there's nothing on that log. However, if we go back into just a regular entry. It says, okay, here's request number 24. Date time, 2002-17, 1431-03, the temperature and the humidity. Now if we do a get log, slash get log, G-E-T-L-O-G. Oh, we got a log entry in there now. We'll just keep adding those log entries to the back of the log as we keep accessing the file. Pretty fancy. Pretty cool. Now we'll delete that. And uh, I'll give you a little practical application we did for this one time. I actually developed this logger program when I put a heater out in the garage. And I wanted to make sure I was getting into all the corners of the garage with it. So the liquid things I left out there in the winter wouldn't freeze. So I put it in each of the four corners and logged it for about 24 hours and compared the temperatures to make sure I was getting an even amount of heat. And it worked pretty well for that. Fantastic. Now I'll put the, put the program in that does this for the Arduino. It's, the programming is very similar to C++. Well, it is C++ with a few extensions. And we'll, uh, we'll put that on along with the Oop, there we got some interrupts from somebody else out there. Yep, other people are logging in. So they're getting into my log, log system there too and checking out the temperature in my shack. So we'll put the program out. You can take a look at that if you're an Arduino fan. And you may want to replicate this whole process. It's pretty cool. A lot of fun doing it. The thing that Amazes me always as years ago, just a few years ago, it would have taken a whole room full of equipment to do this. Fantastic. It's part of what they now term Internet of Things, IoT. Which means you can put these little suckers all over your house and garage and garden, wherever you want them. And keep in touch with everything that's happening. Alright, over and out for now.